Hi! I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama, and today's video... Excuse me, it's not your turn to talk. Today's... Good grief. Today's video, oh my gosh, guys, is how to move with chickens. Um, if you are moving to a new, different house, farm, whatever, and you have birds, um, just some suggestions, things to think about, things to research, potential concerns, um, so a super, super, super quick history. I've had chickens for almost two years. I'm outside San Antonio and we own this home, but we are selling it, um, due to a couple of different issues. And I found the perfect rental that has a walk-in chicken coop. I know you guys want to see it. Hopefully the next video after this one, you'll get to see the new coop. Um, so today's video is going to be about, um, again, just things to think about if you're moving and you have to move your birds things to think about like before you pick a place and the process of moving um <laughs> Calypso was running after something and then i'll do another video soon about um you know kind of on the other side of things like once you have moved here are a couple of other things to be aware of like setting up the new coop um you know disinfecting things like that i'll touch base with that with those things right now but so um the very first thing that you want to be aware of you know you find out that you're going to be moving what the hell am I supposed to do about my birds? So the first thing to be aware of, and I'm in Texas, so maybe some of these things may not apply to you, um, but you know, of course, put comments in here um, so that we can be helping each other, educating each other, because this is all about, you know, spreading chicken awareness of how wonderful they are and helping teach communities and, um, you know, trying to change laws and things like that. So that's the first thing, and I wrote, oh my gosh, I'm so just all over the place because we're moving in two days and the house is like, you know, Tetris with boxes and, so um, the first thing on my list is, in my opinion, the most important is before you move your birds and before you pick a place where you're going to go, um, you need to figure out what the law is. Right, Lacey Bird? Tell them. Yeah. You need to figure out what the law is. And that includes <laughs> city law as well as an HOA, which is a homeowners association. Um, you know, a lot of neighborhoods, the community, they'll have the HOA, which is where you basically pay a ridiculously high amount of money so they can, you know, like tell you to hide your trash cans and stuff. Um, I hate HOAs. I think they're terrible. But um, at least in the San Antonio area, um, the San Antonio city law, if you're inside San Antonio city limits, the rule is eight chickens um, or um, seven plus a rooster. So either eight hens or seven plus one rooster, and those are the two, you know, max possibilities that you can have. Um, other than that, though, there's not really a lot of other requirements. The only other one, and it's, you know, late March of 2019, really the only other requirement is the distance that the coop has to be, like, from your neighbor's house. Not from your house, from the neighbor's house, and those are the only requirements. But at least in this area, an HOA law that says, oh, just kidding, no, you can only have five chickens or only three or none, HOA law will trump city law, which is really stupid and really sucks. So um, in the San Antonio chicken forums right now, there are multiple people who are trying to fight their HOA because they're like, this rule is ridiculous and nobody cares. And you're not even enforcing this rule because there's other people in the neighborhood who have chickens and it's just a big old mess. So you do want to be aware when you're looking at places, you know, can I t even take my birds here or I'm not, am I not allowed to have them? Of course you can run the risk of, I'm not supposed to have chickens, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, you know, but then you run the risk of at best them coming in and finding you and saying you have to get rid of your birds within like seven days or whatever. At worst, they could, you know, that would be grounds for them to break your lease if you're renting, for example, and then you don't have a place to live. So, and you're, then your chickens don't either, right? So please don't do that. So I would suggest trying to be a law abiding citizen, right Blue? Look at her glorious beard. Blue. Love you, Blue. No, not you. You're lacy. Yeah. She's like, oh yeah. Um, so that's the number one thing is check the law. If you are working with a realtor, tell them like, look, I need to be in these zip codes. I need to not be in these zip codes. This is like a deal breaker type situation. Oh my God, Callie's chasing a bug. Um, you know, this is the kind of situation that we're in. I would be upfront with your realtor from the beginning. Um, I have had realtors tell me, because I've worked with quite a few, talking with them and trying to find a rental, say, you know what, I wouldn't even tell them that you have chickens, but I didn't want to run that risk. So the next thing is thinking about, um, you know, where you're going to put the chicken coop. Um, a lot of coops, like this coop kit, I'm hoping is going to be movable. Um, it's going to be mobile. So tomorrow night, I'm going to let the girls free range in the whole backyard. Like, just let them crap all over everything because we're leaving. I don't care. <laughs> um, and 
I'm gonna take the predator proofing, the predator guard that goes around the bottom and anything else that's holding the coop to the ground, um, take all that off, get all of that ready to go. And then I'm praying that on Friday I can crate my birds and I'll tell you what the process is gonna be. But then, um, you know, dump out the PDZ, dump out the pine, and then we can just go dit, 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 and have people move the coop. Um, into the moving truck so that'll be interesting but you do need to be aware of where is the coop going to go again not just because of what the law says like it has to be x amount of feet from a building or whatever but also which way do you want it to face i made the mistake of the north wind blows right into their little door right there so in the winter that was a big problem um you may not want it on the west side of your house because of afternoon sun if you're in a hotter area so just kind of things to think about like where is the coop physically going to go and then which direction is it going to face um, we definitely need to do a better job about that in the the new house than we were here you can also, my kids are dumping the sand out of their sandbox. If you see like these children like running back and forth with buckets, <laughs> they're getting all the sand out and they're dumping it over in the corner. Um, you also want to be aware that you can put, at least on these, a lot of these smaller coops, you can put wheels on them. There are special, and I don't remember what they're called, they're like, you know, heavy duty wheels that, not like for a desk chair or anything, but something way more heavy duty that can handle outside if you're doing a movable coop or, you know, a, a grow out pen or whatever. And then that way, you know, after the chickens destroy one part of the yard, you can move them somewhere else. So just be thinking about positioning make sure you take your measuring tape with you. Um, if you're like me and you're super OCD, you have all the dimensions of your big pieces of furniture and, and that kind of thing. So take take measurements and kind of know, you know, the law and how many yes and how many feet away everything has to be from everything. The day of the move, and this is going to be fun. How are you going to transport your birds? Because you can't transport them in the coop unless it's one of those like weird little green kit ones that's like all included. Um, we're going to have to use the big dog crate that we used for my quarantine videos, and that's going to go in the back of my car. Um, so I'm going to take up their food and water and I have to make sure they have food and water as soon as we get to the new place The new place is only 20 minutes away um, And so I've got to set up food and water not only will excuse me ma'am being pecked because I have a polka dot shirt on um, Not only is that going to slow their laying down for a few days because they're you know They weren't with water during the drive or whatever, but obviously you don't want them They can get dehydrated really quickly. They can start having all kinds of health problems So you want to make sure as quickly as possible you get them fresh food and water so have a plan, even if it's just temporary, even if it's just like one of your kids' plastic bowls or like something really cheap and really temporary, like as soon as you can get them settled somewhere, even temporarily, even in like a, a cat carrier or whatever, like make sure you get them food and water as soon as possible. Again, ours will not have it in the drive because it's only 20 minutes, but that's going to be my job is I've got to get them water as soon as we get there. Make sure also that whether they're just hanging out in a cage, you know, a crate or you know, you put them in, they're going to be locked just in that coop for a day um, while I disinfect the walk-in coop. And I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But um, you need to make sure that even their temporary housing, if you will, and that everything is predator proof. So please be thinking about just keeping an, an eye on the area, keep it well lit, make sure that you, you know, you can reinforce locks, you can buy extra, they're called predator locks or raccoon locks. Um, you know, if you've got like a temporary setup where you're trying to do multi-step locks, you know, where it like has to scan your eye or you have to do like voice recognition or something. And that way we're not worrying about predators while your girls are, are in a temporary setup. Again, mine will be in that hopefully for just one night, maybe not even one night. I mean, if I'm really badass and I can do everything in the same day that I can disinfect the coop as soon as I get there and then put them in the new one, which is much bigger, but we'll see. So again, just think about them being somewhere safe. I mean, hell, you can put them in, in your garage for, for one night or if you've got like a storage shed on the property or something like that. Just making sure that they are, before you get your full setup, like and you get to put your predator proofing down and all of your fences and hawk deterrents and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure while they're just hanging out, they're not, you know, just bait. Like, hello, free food, you know. Um, the other things that I was going to talk about, I'll touch real briefly on disinfecting the new coop. Um, if you were putting them into a different building, of course, if you're taking the same coop, you can always disinfect it too, just for the hell of it. But um, in my lack of knowledge, you know, I go to the backyard chicken forums. And again, if you're on any kind of social media, look for like local chicken groups because they'll know a lot more about the flora and fauna in the area, the pests that, the, that you guys encounter, your type of climate, um, all that kinds of stuff. So in my forums, I was asking them like, dude, we've got this amazing walk-in coop that we are going to be using. Um, you know, how can I disinfect it? It looks like it hasn't been used in a while, but I don't, you know, I don't, I don't trust people. So, you know, I want to make sure I do something. Man, they're just going after bugs. 
and there are a couple things you can do now I think I have all of these um, you know ratios correct but please 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 do research don't just trust me I'm just an idiot on YouTube okay like don't don't trust people on YouTube um, so you can use for a like spray type disinfectant that you would use on everything that you can use it on every surface from plastic to their feeders and waterers empty of course but um, you know to roosts to wood to the ground whatever there are three different choices that I read about that are one method and then I'll talk about the other method so one method is either doing a a diluted solution of either bleach and water white vinegar and water or not and or oh sorry girls sorry got my post-it or Listerine and water and those are all things excuse me as I lean back here Ugh. these are all <laughs> these are all different options did you get it Flopsy that a girl those are all different options that you, you know, mix it. Most of those, and double check, but most of those, I believe it's 50%, um, you know, the thing and 50% water. Um, you know, and then you just put it in a spray bottle and you just saturate everything and let it dry. Bleach, of course, you're going to want to make sure that everything's well ventilated and that the birds are not in there. Um, vinegar, I, I mean, I use vinegar around my birds and I'm like, all right, whatever. Um, but, you know, you want to make sure that everything gets saturated and then it can dry. Um, but particularly with the bleach, you just want to be careful with the fumes. So this is something you would do before your girls are in there. You know, don't spray it like while they're sitting and, and roosting at night. Man, this is hilarious. There's those big mayflies, those big stupid mosquito looking things. And the girls are just going to town. Right? So um, there's the spraying different solutions. You know, some people like vinegar. Some people hate it. Some people want bleach. I'm just going to do vinegar because I'm not that worried about it. Um, you know, my, my birds, you know, I have ivermectin. I also have poultry dust. And again, I'll do another video about like setting up the new coop or like, congratulations, you've inherited another chicken coop. What do you do now? Um, I'm going to Disney World. But anyway, um, the other option that was like totally like what, you know, I have no idea is there's a product called Oxine, O-X-I-N-E. And it is, um, you buy it as a liquid and it can be activated or unactivated and it you basically put it in a fogger and so then it, you know it makes like the mist and you have to saturate everything with the mist that for me was going to be like a $200 expense for the fogger then plus the product that I was gonna to have to go to a specialty place to buy and I just don't have the time and the money to do that right now um, but oxine is safe for your birds um, you can put a very diluted amount like in their water and it keeps like the water containers from getting all slimy um, you can use it in a solution if you ever have to like bathe your birds. So it's a product I definitely want to learn more about. I'm probably going to end up getting. I just, I can't afford to do like to go buy a fogger and like do all of that stuff right now. But it's called Oxine and you would do the same thing. Like it's good for wood and plastic and metal and everything. And you would just fog everything until you can see that everything is moist. You know, it has like the condensation on it, um, you know, and then that would be good to go. So there's a lot of people on the chicken forums who really hype that stuff. And it's the kind of like multi-purpose product that you would like having around anyway. Would you mind not singing right here? I'm busy. No? Okay. Jeez. <laughs> so there's that. Um, of course, you want to have clean bedding. You want to figure out what kind of bedding system you want. I'm not going to do the deep litter method, but that's a way that you could do, you know, if your birds are in like a big run type area, you could do deep litter in their, like under their roosts and stuff. I'm going to continue to do some PDZ for right now and pine in the nest boxes. So I got to clean all that out. Make sure they have clean food and water, of course. The only other thing I was going to suggest quickly is I like to get her tail blown out. <laughs> Flopsy, you look like a turkey, honey. Yeah, sorry. Not trying to be insulting. Um, once we move and we get established, I've always done this because I'm kind of a dork, um, but I always write like, hello, welcome us to the neighborhood. You know, this is my name. This is my husband's name. Come say hi, you know, whatever. And I write these little cards and I put them like in my neighbor's mailboxes or like on their doors. Just, I don't know, just because it would be nice to have like that kind of community mentality in your, you know, community, like duh. Um, but I'm also probably going to bribe my neighbors with eggs. And so that never hurts to say like, you know, I don't know, like give them a picture and say, yes, my chickens have names and they're pets and they're really good for the area because, you know, their poop is actually good for the ground and they actually keep pests away, you know, things like snakes and mosquitoes and flies and things like that. And they're quiet and they make food and, you know, they can help with composting and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, whether you want to inform your neighbors and like help spread the love, you know, again, because you don't want an enemy living next to you because they can make your life 
a pain in the ass. They can try to change the law. They can go complain to the HOA. You know, they can call the cops on you. Like, I don't know. Um, but educating them, like, no, I don't have a rooster. She's a hen, and she does a little thing called an egg song. It's totally normal. This is what it is. Um, you know, giving them eggs, things like that. Because for me, this sounds kind of dumb, but, like, advocacy for teaching people about backyard chickens, you know, and I love my dogs and, you know, we have a turtle and like, I, I love all kinds of animals, but I feel like chickens get like an unfair, I don't know, when it, at least around here, when it comes to the law, I feel like the laws are way stricter for these chickens. Like my birds don't ever make a peep except for they, you know, they do their egg song every once in a while, which only lasts for a second. But we have like these ridiculously loud bar dogs that go, not our dogs, but dogs in the neighborhood that go crazy at like 11 o'clock at night for like minutes on end. And it's like, how is that allowed? And that's okay. But my birds that are actually, I mean, if we want to be real, <clears throat> you know, my chickens are actually more productive and more useful for the family than the dogs are or cats or anything else. So I don't know. It's just, it's just not fair. So instead of being like, oh, well, I'm a jerk and I'm going to have chickens because I can and you just got to deal with it. Here's the law. You know, screw you. Instead being like, hey, you know, here are chickens and they have names. And if you ever want to come over and hang out and give them treats, you know, if you have leftovers and, and just making it a good community thing. Because I certainly want people to, I want people to ask questions about them and I want people to say like, so can they have chicks if there's not a dude around and you know, do you, like this one looks like a rooster, it's not a rooster and that one looks like it has a beard and how old are they? And, and you know, like I want people to ask questions because then they will, you know, people fear what they don't understand and they hate what they don't understand and I want them to understand. And they can't make me get rid of my chicken, so they better like it. <laughs> there's my sassy little afterthought. But anyway, those are my thoughts um, about if you're gonna be moving and you have chickens just some things to think about some things to research ideally before you put your place on the market or you know before you pick what the new place is going to be just some things to think about like okay in this house jeez in this house where would the coop go in this house where would we have it face you know in this house how would we do the yard you could see my previous video about you know the good news for our flock about how you know instead of doing a big run that's like just one big rectangular space we might be doing a little tunnel zone because they have the big walk-in coop and then they might have like a long narrow type space um you know so just kind of thinking as you're, as you're walking places you know making sure that you're talking to your realtor about things the number one thing again is to check the law um, and or the HOA first and it probably varies by city you can certainly call the city contact the city I mean in my experience even animal control and like animal services like for the city like they didn't know what the hell they were talking about because nobody ever calls and asks about chickens so make sure you know what the law is make sure you check first instead of you know you've signed a lease you've put a down payment and now oh wait um, but if you have other suggestions if you've moved with birds um, especially if it's been like a long distance type move like I don't know cross country or that kind of thing like please put comments in. you know let's help each other let's teach each other um, but this is hopefully maybe the last video that I'm, we're gonna be doing here um, I do have other videos if you're finding me for the first time lucky you um, I do have other videos from everything from quarantining birds to what is chicken chores look like to how we built this run um, that's really great it's really adaptable we're gonna be able to take all of these pieces with us um, you know, things you, you can feed your chickens, healthy chicken treats, chicken snacks, all kinds of stuff. I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. My YouTube has been acting weird as far as me getting notifications when you guys put in comments. So feel free to email me instead and that way especially if you've got a question or you need help or something um it's a lot easier for me just the way I get notifications and the way my brain works. I prefer doing email um than you know like Facebook Messenger or you know messaging me on my like my blog Facebook page because I have realsimplemama.com as well. I'm also on Twitter. Um, but if you've got questions or you need help or suggestions, emailing is best. That way you can send me pictures. We can go back and forth and it's not this big convoluted mess. So I hope that I can help you. Um, I'm so excited to show you guys the new place. I will as soon as I can. Um, and I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama, and we'll be back soon.